Thank you for joining us today. The students presenting today are part of the English 12 Honors Online course. The course is blended, but the majority of the curriculum is completed online. The students' capstone projects are problem-solution-based issues in society. Each, stu each student researched an issue, issue of his or her choice and came up with solutions to the problem. Today, you will hear information about racism in our schools and diversity in our leadership. Please feel free to complete the evaluation you received and turn it in at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Let's welcome John Bowlby. Justin, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is John Volpe, and today, oh. Oh. okay, I don't know what happened. Anyway, let's restart. Hello, everyone. My name is John, and today I'm here to talk to you guys about the. <laughs> it's the way I think it's the way you have the cord. We've, we've determined that it's the cord moving. The cord moving. Try and move it. Try and put it in your pocket so just... the cord doesn't move. Gotcha. I feel like that would work. All right. You know, I'm just gonna. Yeah, Fresh <laughs> start, you know what I'm saying? And make everything better. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is John Volpe, and today I'm here to talk to you guys about the racial divide in America and how it's making its way in high schools across America. So we all know about Trayvon Martin. Uh, it was all over the news in 2012, and it was the start of a new race war in America. Trayvon Martin was a young African American teenager with a future ahead of him. On February 26, 2012, his future was taken away from him when he was shot and killed by George Zimmerman, the captain of the neighborhood watch and also a white man. Zimmerman was told to wait for the police to show up and not to do anything, but he ignored his orders. <coughs> Martin didn't deserve to die. His race scared Zimmerman and it resulted in his death. A race war began on this day, black and white people started turning on each other and now it's affecting our youth. So. So I did a poll in our school uh, about racism, and it, the results show that 68.9% of students have witnessed racism. 37.5% of students don't think there'll be an end of racism in high school. And 80% of students don't believe there'll be racism at all. So before we can go to the current problem, let's go back to a similar problem. The Civil Rights Era. The Civil Rights Era took place in 1955 to 1968. The leader of the Civil Rights Movement was Martin Luther King, and the goal, uh, the goal was to end racial segregation and for all people to be recognized as equals. Black and white people worked together to gain equality for all. They achieved this goal through peaceful protests, and in the end, their goal was achieved. White and black people had equal rights, and equal, everyone had equality. So, what is the problem? Well, the problem is that racism is coming back and America is dividing. There are riots and protests happening in America to gain equality. Groups are forming, oh, what the heck? Groups are forming to stop this racism. For example, a group called Black Lives Matter formed. They are a group that are trying to gain equality for black citizens again. This race war is affecting this race war is affecting the youth. Children and teenagers' minds are easily influenced and manipulated. So if a black teenager is seeing discrimination and ra uh, hate towards his race, then he'll start to hate. And this is bringing racism into high schools. The 2016 presidential election caused Americans of all colors to divide. For example, white students at Ladue Horton Watkins High School in Missouri were chanting Trump and racial slurs to African American students. Many African-American students felt hurt and attacked by what the white students were saying to them. But students were, are not the only problem. Teachers are also a problem in this situation, either by not stopping racism when they see it, aiding the situation, or just starting it. And for, uh, an example of this is high school teacher James Corsi said, am I racist? And I say, yeah, I don't want to be. It's not like I chose to be racist, but I do things because of the way I was raised. He also said, to be white is to be racist, period. Students were offended by what he said because they were white and not racist. But other students agreed with what he said, causing lots of controversy in this school. And this just shows an example of how a teacher can aid the situation. Another example is stere uh, racial stereotypes. For example, a Muslim student wearing a turban might be called a terrorist, or a white kid wearing a trench coat might be called a school shooter. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, well, it does. 
African American and other minority students are being treated unfairly in schools and aren't getting as good of an education as white students. Schools with a higher population of white students are getting are receiving better treatment and better education than schools with a higher population of African and Latino students. A quarter of the schools with the highest percentage of black and Latino students did not offer Algebra 3, and, uh, uh, and a third of these did not offer chemistry. If a school is a majority of minorities, then it doesn't offer as good as an education. Black students were more than three, like, three times as likely to attend schools where fewer than 60% of the teachers met all certification and license requirement. So black people are attending schools with teachers that are not even certified to become teachers. Um, and also, the Department of Education examined pre-K schools and saw that black children as young as the age of four aren't even being tra treated fairly. Minorities are facing difficulties by the Department of Education and aren't given the education they deserve. White students are receiving better free, uh, free public school education than minorities. And the worst thing of all is students are not the only problem with racism. The Board of Education is too. So what's this possible solution? Well, I propose uniforms. Uniforms will end racial stereotypes and students will want to be attacked verbally for what they are wearing. Students aren't are at school for education, not to be racially discriminated and targeted. Also, there will be less codeconic violations for what students are wearing. So the girls wearing spaghetti straps or dresses or cop tops won't get in trouble, the same as guys that sag their pants. Also, my idea will save families money. According to the National Retail Federation, in 2016, the average parent spends on their kids for back-to-school clothing is $235, without shoes included. Shoes nowadays can range from $20 to $200. So I propose we do a swap and sale. A swap and sale is a sale where students and families can swap their almost brand new like uniforms items for new uniform items, and they can also purchase pre-owned uniform items. This could save more money for families because they won't be able to buy, they, because they won't have to buy brand new uniform items each year for their children. Not only will uniforms end racial stereotypes, it will also prevent the number of code of conduct violations and save families money. So, there is a pro some problems with my solution. First off, my solution cannot change or conceal the color of a student's skin. And secondly, 75% of the Freedom High School students do not go along with my solution. And I understand all of us don't want to wear uniforms, but you'll all have to understand, we are here for education and to learn, not to be making fashion statements. My friend said, people wear clothing to be unique. I fully understand that. But like I said, we are here to, for education, not fashion, to make fashion statements. So, ways administration can help solve this problem are, administration has to let students and teachers know that racism is not a joke. They have to reward students who are strive to, against racism, and they have to make sure their staff is diverse and the hire teachers and faculty members that are right for the job. They have to make sure to treat everyone as equals and make sure everyone else treats everyone like equals. America's go America is going through a rough time. We need to stand together and let this battle, not let this battle get the best of us. It's up to the youth of America, uh, youth of America to stand by one another. Tomorrow's future is being affected by today's leader. Everyone is created equal, so why should we treat others like they aren't? Uh, you look at me, and you see a white kid, nicely dressed, who isn't facing the problems of this racial discrimination. And you're probably thinking, why does he care about this? Well, I care because no one deserves this bad treatment. We are all created equally, and no one or no race deserve, should be treated differently. Chief Joseph said, the earth is the mother of all people, and all people should have equal rights upon it. Thank you.